Hello, my name is Dr Ina Berg. I'm a senior lecturer at the University of Manchester and my talk today is about the relationship between inclusion orientation and speed. There's a lack of understanding of the relationship between um, speed of the wheel rotation, speed of pulling up a vessel and the resulting orientation of the clay pores or of the inclusions. The speed of rotation is highly relevant as different wheel uh, throwing devices have different speeds that they can um, achieve. Thus, knowing the speed during manufacture may allow inferences about the capabilities of the device and perhaps even of the uh, potter's skill. Two contrasting views exist in the literature. One is that there is a direct relationship between these variables and that the angle of the inclusions of the direction of the inclusions um, can therefore be um, a guide to the speed of the wheel. Um, the second view is that um, because pots are never thrown as a single motion but are reworked, modified um, as they're being made, the angle really cannot provide a meaningful uh, inferences respect, uh, retrospectively about the speed of the wheel. So with this in mind, um, I've um, developed some experiments to test these hypotheses and I'm reporting them here for the first time. Since the first application of X-radiography to ceramics in the 1960s, X-radiography has established itself as a powerful technique to identify forming techniques um, in the ceramic record. It was Rye um, who first recognised, and I quote, that the application of pressure to plastic clay causes mineral particles, voids and organic fragments to take up preferred orientation, which will then affect the clay body. The resulting alignments and distribution of inclusions, as well as the shape and orientation of voids, is characteristic of each forming technique and will not normally be obliterated by secondary forming techniques or decoration procedures. Um, he has rec he recognised this in, in a paper, a, a seminal paper from 1977, and that is where the quote is from. And um, an illustration of what he has said is provided on the left-hand side, where you can see that category C, so the third one uh, from the top, um, shows the pattern left behind by wheel throwing. So on the left hand side you've got the typical spiral motion that you would see with your um, eyes. In the center you then have the diagonal orientation of the voids or the inclusions as seen uh, from an x-ray from the front, or you have the um, vertical alignment of pores and inclusions um, if you were x-raying a cross-section. Angles of the voids and elongated inclusions can vary, and it was Rye um, who first considered whether these angles might be able to provide us with additional information about the forming process. And so you've got Rye's quote on the left, where he says, um, the study of x-rays of various thrown vessels suggests that the rapidity of the lifting action is reflected in radiographs by the angle which inclusions take to the horizontal. With slow lifting action, the angle is smaller, say 20 to 30 degrees, and with a faster lifting action, the angle approaches 45 degrees. He also acknowledged in the same paper that it was necessarily um, not only to look at the um, speed of the rotation, um, but also the speed of lifting. So both speeds need to be taken into account and that these kind of speeds will potentially impact on the results. And he then proposed experiments um, that should be undertaken to test um, this hypothesis. In 2008, I undertook some experiments to test this hypothesis, and I asked a potter to throw two vessels, one lifted quickly and one lifted slowly. I then x-rayed the pots and established the angle of um, the inclusions. 
and that's what you can see here on the right hand side. And so what you can see is from the results that both shallow and steep angles can be found in both the slowly and the fast thrown vessels. And often they are clearly visible in the same level. <clears throat> My interpretation of the results was that the angle variety is a result of the changing rotational um, speed employed by the potter as they're pulling up the vessel. As we know, a potter might slow down or speed up um, the vessel as, as is needed as they are pulling up the, the, the clay. But also that potters don't, of course, pull up a vessel in a single motion, but they rework it, they modify it, they go back over things, they compress and elevate um, the clay. So I did conclude that the diagonal, diagonal orientation of the inclusions is a clear indicator of real throwing, but the angle cannot allow us to extrapolate back to the original speed that was used to pull up a vessel. Um, I as assumed that the um, occlusion angles were um, really very relevant, um, but probably they were too sensitive a marker of all the work that a potter does on a vessel so that they could not be reliably used because of this reworking and the changing of the speed. Um, that happens almost automatically and um, by the potter. So the usefulness of sort of a retrospective deduction of the speed, I thought was was not really given because the the reworking, the speed modification, and so on, just didn't um, give us the information. I thought at the time that if, for example, we could get potters to throw a vessel in a single motion um, at a single speed, but perhaps um, they would then result in inclusion angles that could allow us to extrapolate back um, to the original speed. But I didn't investigate this um, option experimentally any further at the time. So this year now I set out to do more experiments to hopefully resolve that question. And I um, worked with two potters, uh, Joe Hartley, who is a very experienced potter I've worked with a lot um, before, and then also Tom Longdon, who is um, intermediate level um, potter. So here is this sort of experimental um, setup. So I asked them to produce four different combinations with two pots each. Combination one is fast, fast, so fast wheel rotation, and fast pulling up, or we have fast, slow, slow, fast, or slow, slow. Um, as I said, in total, each of them at least produced two examples for each of the combinations. Initially, the idea was that um, I would give them set times in which they need to pull up a vessel or um, set speeds, um, but some of that proved a little bit too problematic. So bottom left, I've given the, the speed and time ranges that um, we then eventually used. Um, but you can see they are quite, quite narrow. So um, that there's a good match between the different combinations. It has to be said that these experiments presented quite a, a challenge to the potters because of course they are not used to always use the same um, wheel rotation speed they are used to modifying that according to the stage of the throwing process. And the other thing that they're not used to is pulling up a vessel in a single motion. But they are, of course, used to um, going back, modifying, pulling up, pushing down um, and modifying it as they kind of go along. So that those two aspects proved a, a considerable challenge to the potters. And so they were allowed to experiment uh, beforehand to kind of get the feel for for these new um, um, variables that they needed to um, meet. And so here then is the um, setup of the experiments. So each of course each potter would initially center um, the clay on the bat um, and that was in order to um, true it and make sure there are no horizontal um, wobbles 
that could later cause problems. Um, they would then prepare what we called a, a starter shape. And this was necessary because obviously there was no reworking permitted during the actual throwing action. So everything needed to be ready for the potter to pull up the entire clay body um, in one motion. And so um, potters prepared the starter shape. As you can see on the second photo on the left, that's the starter shape. Then they pressed in the, um, the fingers in order to cre create a central hole and prepare the base. And then, um, as you can see on the fourth photo, so the second from the, from the right, you can see the final starter shape where the base has been prepared and you have an overhang both inside and outside, so where the fingers could then grip and pull up um, the vessel in one, one motion. So you have this sort of under undercut. The picture on the far right um, shows you the actual lifting motion. And so you can see that once the starter shape had been prepared and the base was at the right um, width, the potters would then lift the clay mass and change it into the vessel wall in this one continuous motion. And they would use um, fingers from both hands to achieve that. So both thumbs and the index finger on the left hand would do the initial preparation and lifting. The middle finger on the left hand and then the index finger on the right hand would then be used to flatten the rising clay wall and pull it up all the way. All the pots were then cut in half, um, dried to the leather hard stage, fired and then x-rayed. Once the x-ray um, had been produced, I then removed the top one centimetre and the bottom five centimetres from each pot um, and excluded that from my analysis of the um, inclusion orientation. The reason for that is that the, um, the top one centimetres is close to the rim and that's the area the potters spend more time um, in order to make it look nice and to finish it off um, correctly so um, it wasn't quite as representative of the pulling pulling up motion as um, I would like it to be and the bottom five centimeter ex I excluded because that was the size of the starter shape which as we saw had to be prepared beforehand so that the potters could then pull up the vessel in one motion um, and obviously the starter shape was pushed down pulled up moved sideways and so on. So that had actually been modified. So I excluded that from my um, assessment. Once I had the um, x-rays ready, I then um, looked at the theoretical foundations for my experiment. And I prepared a, um, a theoretical kind of expectation predictions of what I expected to see um, according to the different speeds, the rotational speed, and then the pulling up speed. On the left hand side you can see the scheme that um, I developed and you can see that I expected um, slow wheel rotation with fast pulling up to be the one that shows the um, steepest angles where, whereas the um, fast wheel but very slow pulling up would result in the shallowest angles with the other two um, covering the middle ground. And on the right hand side, I then developed um, a scheme of how I would classify the different angles and I divided them into shallow, medium and steep. And so you can see, see which, um, which ones are classified as what on the right hand side. And here are the um, results. On the left hand side, you've got um, Joe Hartley's results. On the right hand side, you've got Tom Longdon's um, results. Overall the experiments showed that there's much more variation than uh, I had anticipated. Um, the angle proportions between the pot to two potters varied for almost all of the combinations. There were very little, there was very little overlap between the two potters in how the angle proportions looked to each other. Um, an example is a fast fast where they look relatively similar but when you're looking, for example, at slow, slow, um, Joe and Tom have very different distributions of angles of the shallow, medium and 
um, steep angles. Most importantly, perhaps the hypothesized orientation of angles did not match my theoretical um, expectations. Another noteworthy um, point to make is that skill appears to have made a difference as well in how the angles um, proportions are distributed. For example, when you're looking at um, Joe's results, you can see that the angles for um, pot 16 and for um, pot 21 are very, very similar. Um, so slow, slow and fast, slow have a very different composition. So there seems to be um, also um, a quality of skill that um, can impact on the resulting angles. Now moving on to the results just from Joe. You can see at the top left that um, we have a very similar angle distribution for two different combinations. So slow, slow and fast, slow look almost identical. The same applies to um, bottom left, where we have slow, fast and fast, slow, which again has very similar angle distribution. And then the contrasting one is on the top, on the right, where Joe had thrown uh, fast, fast twice, but you can see that the proportion of the angles are very, very different between those two throws. As a next step, I then um, try to bring out the more extreme values more clearly, and so I highlighted the shallow and the steep angles and combined the remaining angles. So in the top line, you have blue, which represents the shallow angles, and the orange-gray pattern represents medium and steep angles thrown together. In the bottom row, the opposite, you have the steep angles in gray, and then the medium and shallow ones in, in blue and orange in the hatch design. And so what you can see is the angle distribution, um, the averaging of all of those across the combinations. And you can see kind of a pattern emerging. So slow, slow has the highest number, highest proportion of shallow angles, whereas you have fast, fast to the very right, which has the the smallest number of shallow angles. And the same sequence is repeated at the bottom, where you have slow, slow with the smallest number of steep angles, and fast, fast shows you the highest number of steep angles. The two intermediate groups um, have been reversed between um, the top and the bottom row, but they are very, very um, similar in their different angle proportions of the shallow and the steep ones. So. Um, they are almost kind of identical. What is interesting here is that um, the angles that we're getting are very different from the theoretically predicted models. Um, and so they are very, very different. Um, if you remember, the models predicted that um, slow fast would be the, the steepest angle and that fast slow would be the most shallow angle. So that has not um, applied. What this might hint at is the importance of finger pressure. Um, for slow, slow movement, it meant that the potter couldn't really push very hard because it would thin the wall too much and they needed to gradually and slowly lift the walls. Whereas for the fast, fast motion, they needed to dig in quite hard and that might have impacted on the orientation of the inclusions. To conclude, um, the experiments have shown, of course, that the diagonal angle alignment um, remains a well-established method of determining that a pot has been um, wheel-made. However, they've also shown that the angle of the straw inclusions cannot be used to deduce the speed of the wheel or the speed of the pulling up motion, even in an idealised experimental setting that required a consistent wheel speed and a um, predetermined pulling up speed. And obviously both of these conditions are entirely artificial and will not be found in the normal potting um, setup. Um, the vessels were produced to um, the same combinations don't always show the same distribution of shallow, medium and steep angles. 
Likewise, a skilled potter can produce different combinations, which then have the same proportions of shallow, medium and steep angles. So this might introduce the idea that there's um, an element of skill also that needs to be taken into account. Lastly, the theoretical predictions do not match the actual end results of the experiments. Um, that might hint at the importance of finger pressure that um, was applied during the slow production versus the fast production and might have therefore impacted on the um, orientation of the angles. The other option is that the, um, the straw inclusions that I used were perhaps a little less mobile than um, anticipated and it might be worthwhile repeating the experiments um, with hay which is slightly more uh, mobile and can be moved a little bit more easily. Thank you very much for uh, watching. Happy to take any questions. Thank you.